this video we'll talk about three things. First of all, the design of this particular machine. Why did I design it like this? What was I trying to achieve? Secondly, what are the features of this machine? Some of which you won't see in a regular CNC machine. Why have we got that? We'll give you a quick overview of that. And then finally, right at the end, we'll move on to the plans. Yes, we're going to release the CAD plans for this machine that you can download. So why this particular design? Well, I need to cut very large panels out of light ply, balsa wood, plywood for making radio control model aircraft. So basically I needed a pretty large cutting area, probably larger than you could get with a, a regular mill. Uh, I also needed a high speed router. So I needed this pretty large swept area. I also needed to cut out pretty large chunks of aluminium like this, leave a good surface finish and have a pretty accurate location on all the holes. So therefore I needed a pretty accurate and pretty stiff machine. So this design suits my needs well, but it might not be the machine for you. There's a lot of parts in here, a lot of complexity, and you can get away with a lot less. You can just have a beam router and that will machine wood all day long and the occasional bit of aluminium as well. I, mean, I bootstrapped my way up from some simpler machines to build this, and they machine the aluminium without any real issue. But if you want to machine a lot of aluminium, you do need some stiffness, so either a mill or something like this is ideal. The point I'm trying to make is you don't need anything this complex and this overbuilt almost um, to do a lot of this CNC hobby type work. So before you embark on this, if you think you're making something like this, just make sure this is definitely the machine for you and you can't get away with a lot less and a lot simpler, a lot quicker to build and a lot cheaper and easier to build as well. Let's talk about some other features. So in the UK we call this long axis the X axis and across there the Y. So this is a raised X design. So essentially this beam here is part of the bed and that makes these sides very, very stiff because you can over engineer those and make that really solid. And then your gantry just rides on top of that. So the X axis itself is this double beam gantry arrangement and that makes it particularly stiff because you're supporting the Y axis at the front and the rear and it forms this complete box section and that whole gantry just moves back and forth on the raised sides of the bed. So driving that gantry back and forth, we've got 1605 screws here, a one-to-one -one pulley arrangement. This is a HDD5 belt, 15 millimeters wide, and then we've got a NEMA 23 driving that. We've got exactly the same setup on the other side. They're not mechanically linked, but they're slaved together in software in Mac 3, so they're always putting out the same step and say it's staying in synchrony. And that drives those. Now I've had no issue doing that whatsoever. If you're nervous about that, you can mechanically link them with another belt or you can have other arrangements, have a long belt and have a single larger motor. Then on the Y axis, we've got these two 1605 ball screws driven by this HTD5 belt, 15 millimeters wide. We've got the two tensioners here, slide in that channel there. Uh, and the channel works that on the other end of this bolt, there's a, a nut and the nut cannot rotate because it's kind of captive in that channel. And then you can do this up and tighten the belt. And then the stepper's driven from this one through here. Let me show you the stepper's inside. Mount is on the back of that plate there. And then just to finish it off, I just made this 10 millimeter Perspex cover to try and stop you getting anything tangled or getting your fingers caught in there. The other thing that's worth pointing out is the head spindle tramming system that I put onto this machine. So the whole y-axis sits on these plates here and these plates, there's one here and one on the other side, these plates are separated from this part here which moves on the linear rails via these grub screws. So the 12 this side and they bear down onto the small steel inserts so they don't impinge too far into the aluminium. And the idea of that is so that we can subtly align the head. Now I showed it in one of the earlier videos, uh, so I won't repeat it here, but by, uh, by sweeping a DTI round on a, a known flat surface, we're able to basically dial the spindle in so it's perfectly perpendicular. And once we're good on these grub screws, you can lock tight those in and then tighten up the main bolts and then you know everything is set and uh, that system's worked pretty well. Uh, it was only slightly out but it enabled me to dial it right in. So that was a nice little feature of the y-axis, tramming the head. On 
the Z-axis, I've got the two NEMA 23s driving the ball screws either side. Again, they're 1605, driven through couplings. This time the direct drive, not belt. So here's the Z-axis. You can see the two linear rails here. These are 20 millimeter linear rails. So there's two at the front and two at the rear. So they kind of hold that Z-axis in place. We then got our spindle bracket here, and there's one at the top that holds the spindle in place. The spindle itself is, on this machine, is a 1.5 kilowatt uh, water-cooled Chinese spindle. Uh, it's better to go for the 2.2 kilowatts. It's still 80 millimeters diameter body, but instead of this ER11 collet, you get a larger collet, and rather than being limited to six millimeters, which is what I've got here, or quarter inch, you can go up somewhere like half an inch, 12 millimeters on that. Uh, most people use that, say, somewhere around the eight millimeters can be a, a nice sweet spot for that particular spindle. But in any case, I think it gives you a lot more flexibility. So I definitely go for the 2.2 kilowatt rather than the 1.5, but that's what I have. Uh, and they're a great hobby spindle, really recommend it over, say, a router. So that's what we've got in the, the Z-axis. Okay, so why the twin ball screws on every axis? Well, if we think about this X-axis here, and then we go over to the Y-axis here, and the Z-axis with its two ball screws, effectively what we're doing we're trying to drive that spindle layer equally on both sides. So we're pushing behind it and in front, on this side, on the left and the right. And for the Z axis, we're pushing on this part and this part. So effectively what you're doing there is you're pushing either side of that spindle and not allowing it to have a moment and turn like this and deflect out of the way in any particular direction. You're keeping the cutting forces in the center of where you're pushing with your ball screws in both X, Y, and in Z. That's part of the reason why we get good control and good stiffness on this machine. Uh, one of the other reasons is this double gantry. That makes it particularly stiff. If we look at the Y axis itself and the Z axis, this is what's called a box construction. So we've got a box for the Y and then a box for the Z inside. It's a box within a box. The spindle itself is held in this piece here. This is machined from solid, so this is pretty sturdy. And then we've got these 30 millimeter thick side panels down here that go all the way top to bottom. So we've got a very stiff uh, Z axis, very stiff Y axis, all the forces being resolved through these rails and the cutting forces being resolved by having the ball screws either side. So it makes for a pretty stiff and reasonably accurate machine, especially for our home use. <laughs> uh, the other thing that makes this machine uh, pretty good is that we've got these linear rails down here. So these are 20 millimeter linear rails. So we've got two carriages on this side and two on the other. On the y-axis, again, we've got 20 millimeter rails and we've got a carriage here, one on the other side, one over here, one on the other side. So we've got four of those. And then for the z-axis, we've got two, four, six, eight of them inside. The other thing you can notice on that are these little 3D printed seals. So a friend of mine printed these out Really grateful Tibbs is working really well, really pleased with that. Okay, being a water cooled spindle, we need to make provision for that water cooling. So we've got a temperature sensor up here. That's measuring the temperature of the water that's coming back from the spindle. You can just see that housing there. There's a little sensor in there that goes into that housing, measuring that temperature. Uh, we've got an 80 millimeters fan. This is out of a PC for keeping PCs cool. When you put your hand here when it's running, you can feel a gentle draft of some slightly warm air, so it's clearly doing something. And in here, you can't see it behind this cover, but there's uh, the pump and also a reservoir to keep the fluid in. And that works really well. So let's talk a little bit about backlash. So these Chinese ball screws and ball nuts typically have about 50 microns or 0.05 millimeters of backlash in them. And let's face it, most of the time that's plenty good enough, especially for hobby use. But I decided on this machine it wouldn't be too difficult to actually have two ball screws arranged such that I was able to preload one slightly against the other and try and reduce that close to zero if possible. Now of course the way I've got it here there isn't a spring compensating or anything like that. So if there's any slight variation in the pitch of these as we go down here then it will slightly vary that preload so there might be a subtle bit of backlash and then sometimes there will be none at all um, but I've done some tests with the DTI and it's for all the places I've tested it it's effectively zero so this works pretty well and the, uh, there's not too much drag on it and the motor can overcome uh, the slight extra force that that's providing 
So I, th I think I'll definitely do that again. That's a fairly simple thing to do and not too expensive. Now on the y-axis I had provisioned, you can see some extra holes here, provisioned to put a pair of ball screws again preloaded against each other on this side and on the other side. But in the end I decided that because I was only driving it off a single motor and there would be a little bit more friction, a bit more load on this one and this one, and it's moving all that mass there, I decided I'd just stick with the one. And the way I then decided to do the backlash was, you might have seen it in the video, which was to, uh, when I'm setting all this up, effectively I'll turn this to preload the balls on this side against that side and then locked it on this shaft here. So effectively there's some inbuilt tension into the system of that ball screw over there against that one sort of rotationally just to try and take out the backlash. So effectively when it's going one way it's um, it's really pushing on one ball screw more than the other and the same when it comes back the other way. And again in tests that's worked really well when I put a DTI against it and measure any backlash it's pretty small. So that's another good way to do it. So I'll definitely do that again as well. So after a lot of thought, I've decided to make a small charge just to make it worth my while. Plus, as you'll see in a little while, uh, the site that I'm going to host this CAD file on for you to download, there is a monthly charge there. And I mean, I don't mind giving this CAD out so you guys can make your own machine or as a start point. Um, but last thing I want to do is uh, lose money over it. So I uh, hope you can understand. So now I've got that out of the way. Um, I decided to charge uh, 25 pounds, which is about 31 US dollars or about 28 euros. So the first thing to decide was the format that this CAD's got to run in, and I decided, well, Fusion 360 is pretty popular. Uh, I don't use the CAD side of this myself, but I thought if I upload into that format, a lot of people can get a lot out of it. Uh, the problem was this took many months of uploading individual files to the cloud uh, and then inserting those into the model and they're doing all sorts of things like attaching them and getting them into the right position. So it's taken quite a while. I've also had to update and correct uh, minor changes that I made during the build to make sure I had the most up-to-date and realistic CAD model. So here you can see an example of some parts being inserted and you can see it takes a little while. Once you've got that part uploaded, it's then got to be positioned in the CAD model itself. Yes, yeah, taking a while. So now the part's uploaded and we've got to position it so it's accurately positioned in space. As you can see, it's just coming in some arbitrary position. So for this, I'm using the joint command within Fusion. So we've got to join the center of that belt, the center of that pulley, and then align it on the pulley. 
So this is just showing a, a typical example of what you have to do to bring each of these parts in. So it takes a little while to go through. I think there are about 80 parts in total. And the final step is to break the link with the object in the cloud so that the whole file is a self-contained entity. This can take a while. Okay, now we're back. And here's the x-axis gantry complete. And then just fast forwarding, here's the complete model. So this is everything you're going to receive in the zipped file ready to run on Fusion. Okay, let's run through a few important points. This build, as you can imagine, is not for beginners. You need to have built a machine before this, maybe even two, before you contemplate this kind of project. Um, if you really do intend to build something like this, I do recommend you study the design, making sure you understand how it all works. Don't just go, just blindly copy. Just make sure you really understand what it's trying to tell you. Uh, there's no fasteners, no connections. Those kind of things are not, there's no bolts and nuts shown in there. You need to make sure that you understand where, what holes are clearance and what holes are tap thread. They're all metric, um, so that will help, but you need to make sure you understand that side. It only really shows the main parts. There's no cable gantries, water cooling system. It's the basic mechanical building blocks to get a machine like this working. Uh, also, because they're imported into 360, there's no design history. So if you need to modify any parts, you're most likely going to have to draw that part again yourself. So this is really just a start point as a basis for your own machine and your own design to have some fun with. Some other things to bear in mind, I can't create custom designs, make changes, any special changes for anybody. The CAD's provided just as it is for your own hobby use, just to have fun with. Uh, it's also only as a Fusion 360 file. Now, I can't really support detailed technical questions. Uh, I'm really not going to have time to get into that side of it. It's really just there to provide a starter for your own design, have some fun with, create some interest, um, and hopefully give you some enjoyment. Okay, so how do you get hold of the file? Well, as I mentioned earlier, the file's pretty big, it's about 35 megabytes. So I managed to find a site called FetchApp who will host that, but there is this small monthly charge I just need to, to cover. Um, you don't need to go into that application, but just to show you that's where it's stored. Uh, if you go onto the link, scroll down in the text box for this video, you'll see a hyperlink that will take you to, uh, you'll need a PayPal account, it'll take you to this PayPal uh, login screen. You log in there, make that payment, and then press a button, mark something like back to shop. And then it should take you to a kind of shop based on Fetch app and that will um, enable you to download the zip file. You then just open that directly into Fusion 360 and you'll see the model and you can start playing. One final thing to note is that within Fetch app, it allows you three downloads just in case you mess up. So just carefully step through those steps and uh, should have no problems. Mm -hmm.